we go start the meeting. Uh, good afternoon. Happy Friday. That's Claire, if you would please do roll roll call. Certainly. Uh, Nancy. I am here. Dana. I see Marina is here filling in. Colleen. Here. Christina. I am here. Tracy. Here. Brian. Here. Sean. Here, and I need to leave at two o'clock, so thanks. Thank you. Uh, Eric. Well, I'm here. Brian. I know Hannah's filling in. Hi. And Cynthia. Here. And Sunari. Here. Super. All right. So Claire, I'm going to ask that you have um, that you work with the um, staff working group members to introduce themselves, and then uh, our one advisory board member today, I believe that's with us. Yeah, so we have uh, Ryan Dish Guzman uh, joining us from the advisory board, um, who's on camera there. You can see. Um, and then our staff work group members, um, we've got, if folks would uh, come off mute and uh, say hi and introduce yourselves. I'm uh, Kayla Daffern. Sorry, my video is not on. Um, and I work with King County and I'm on the work group. Matt, you want to go next? Oh. Yeah, hey everybody, Matt Torpy, Community Development Manager with the City of Maple Valley. And how about Marina? Oh, I think Marina is calling in by phone. Uh, so, and it looks like Dorsal, Dorsal just got kicked out of the meeting. So that's not good because he is the host. Um, so hopefully we'll get him back in. Um, and then Hannah, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi folks, Hannah Bond Miller uh, with the City of Renton representing um, until Council Member McGovern joins us. Super. And I'm just going to check and see the attendees if we have anyone. I see uh, Daphne Hernandez representing City of Covington. Um, in the public public view there, she is here. Um, and I think that's that's our crew for today. All right. Well, then we are going to move, first of all, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on this. I would love to say lovely sunny Friday afternoon, but I would be lying. Uh, maybe it's sunny where you are, but it is really gray here. So, except it's sunny to see all of your faces. So we are going to move into public comment. This is the time on the agenda for the public. Uh, if you would like to make comment, please use the raised hand function at the bottom of your screen. You'll have three minutes to make your remarks. Please state your name and city of residence for the record. Uh, and if, um, going to ask if there is anyone that has joined us, either Claire or Dorsal, if Dorsal is back, that has uh, raised their hand for public comment. I'm not seeing anyone with their hand raised. All right. We will then move past public comment and move to the approval of the minutes of the March 17th, 2023 meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Tracy. And was that Christina or Cynthia? Sorry, my head was down. I didn't see who it was that, that uh, Cynthia, all right. So we have a motion and a second to accept the minutes or to approve the minutes of March 17th. Is there any discussion? All right. All, excellent. Thank you. All those in favor of the March 17th, 2023 minutes, please say aye. 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 
All opposed, please say no. The minutes have successfully passed. We'll move on to item four, old business. And this is the 2024 draft work plan and budget review. And uh, wanted to thank Claire for continuing to develop and refine that 2024 skip work plan and budget. Uh, and just as a reminder, it must be, pat must be adopted by us, the board, by June 1st, according to our SKIP uh, interlocal agreement. And we are on track and we will hear more this afternoon. And I'm going to turn it over to Claire at this point. Claire. Thank you. Uh, and so I would actually propose a five minute recess to get Dorsal back in this meeting <laughs> um, because he will be helping uh, coordinate the slides and he also has a presentation. So he's a key part mm -hmm. of this team. I wanna make sure um, we can get him back in and he's restarting his computer now. Okay. So, um, well then we will go into recess for five minutes. So that means we're back at 1.16. Well, I guess I'll turn my video off. I feel silly being the only one. You can have your video on, Eric. It's
All right. So dorsal is. I see a name dorsal in attendees, but I don't know if that's the real dorsal or if it's someone who is logged in. <laughs> the real dorsal, and I'm trying to promote him to join this meeting. I don't know if it's going to work. It doesn't seem to be working. So, oh, well, he's off of there. Okay. There we go. I don't know. Is that you, dorsal? Yes. Yay. Sorry. About okay. Welcome so you, back. You're, you may not be on a device that has the slides would be my guess. Okay. So um, I'm wondering, Michaela, if there's any chance you might be willing to sh um, screen share my slides so that I can see my talking points and <laughs> The faces on the screen <laughs> um, would be very helpful. I emailed it to ya. I'm sorry, I did not notice that. I will. I, I wouldn't expect you to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pulling them up right now. Okay, let's see if I need to allow, give you any kind of permission or. Let's see. Screen. And thank you everyone for your patience. I do not currently have screen sharing permissions. Okay, I'm gonna make you a co-host. Let's see and see if that will let you. Beautiful, thank you. Sorry, almost there. Present slideshow. Sorry, oh. I got a brand new laptop and nothing is set up the way it was on my last laptop, so nothing is where it's supposed to be. Um, one would think that today was the thirteenth. The way things are going. Looks, I can see the slide. <laughs> Thank you, Michaela. Oh, and thank you board for your patience. I so appreciate it. Sorry about this. And many thanks to Michaela for jumping in. Um, so, um, so good afternoon. Uh, thank you all. Um, and good to be here. Good to see the members of the executive board, um, our, our advisory board member, uh, members of the public, our staff work group, um, I am Claire Goodwin, uh, Executive Manager for SKIP, and I'm here today to present a draft 2024 work plan and budget for your uh, review and discussion. So we've been engaging on this topic since February, um, and I'm excited to share this draft with you today for your feedback uh, and to answer any questions you may have. Uh, you can find the draft work plan and budget in your calendar invite for this meeting um, and also in an email from me, uh, time stamped Wednesday morning at 9.29 a.m. So next slide, please. All right, thank you. So our interlocal agreement says that on or before June 1st of each year, a recommended operating budget and work plan for SKIP for the next budget year will be prepared, reviewed, and recommended by the executive board and transmitted to each party. Our ILA says that each legislative body must approve the work plan and budget. So our budget year runs January 1st through December 31st. And apologies for any frustration caused uh, to the member jurisdictions who run from July to June uh, fiscal years, um, which I think is most of you, um, if that causes any issues. Uh, in terms of the development and approval process, we are modifying it slightly this year and I'll walk you through the steps. Do, do we have any governments that are July through June? I think most of us are on calendar year. I think, isn't Renton um, 
Hannah? Did I make that up? Um, I think our past conversation was related to uh, the billing of SHB 1406 and the, that commerce had run on the fiscal year. Oh, okay, thank you. Well, good. Thank you for that clarification, um, Mayor Backus. So, um, so, so yes, my bad joke uh, fell flat, so <laughs> it's okay. Um, so let's see, so. Um, we're, we're calendar year, federal ways. Great, everyone is calendar year. Um, Thanks. I appreciate that. So I'm just looking to see, making sure um, I didn't skip something. Um, all right. So talking about the changes. Um, sorry about that. Okay. Okay. So, so as mentioned, we've, we're, we're changing the process slightly this year. Um, so, uh, to, to review what we've done, uh, to date, um, sorry, I'm having problems over here. Um, so we, we gave the executive board, um, and the advisory board, uh, surveys back in February. Then we did the workshop last month. Um, I took that information and created a draft, which I shared with the um, work group, uh, staff work group and the advisory board. I incorporated their feedback and uh, today is the, the version, um, the most up-to-date version uh, that you're seeing um, in your calendar invite that you received. Um, and we're gonna go over that today for your review and feedback. Um, if if the board has changes that you would like to see today, um, I will incorporate that um, later today um, and early next week and have a revised version to you by, uh, by Tuesday is the goal. Um, and so the process this year um, is a little uh, different. Um, and I'm asking you to all serve as uh, ambassadors between SKIP and your uh, member councils to solicit feedback um, from your uh, members of your council uh, for this work plan and budget uh, and to get that feedback um, back to me by May 9th. And so this is a, a fairly quick turnaround, about two weeks. And the intention is to uh, minimize the potential for any last minute changes since there are so many layers of review and um, approvals that need to need to occur. Um, this is our um, this is our attempt at um, getting that feedback early, making those changes so that um, when the final version comes to your councils, we can uh, move forward pretty pretty smoothly um, without any last minute changes. And so the goal is, um, you know, uh, what that could look like um, from your perspective is um, assuming there there may be some some changes today. Um, next week, I know some folks have councils. I think Monday nights, Tuesday nights. Um, so I don't, it, that may look like emailing it, emailing the draft to the members of council um, and then having a follow-up um, maybe through a committee report out at the end of a council meeting um, for those with city managers, um, maybe in the city managers report out briefing um, or even maybe good old fashioned one-on-ones um, could be an option uh, for you if that makes sense for, for you. Um, However, that looks, um, um, you know, working working as closely as you feel is is necessary um, and appropriate with with your council members. Um, getting any feedback uh, from them and, and sharing that with me would be really helpful, um, so that we would have a revised draft. A, I would say a final draft that would come back to you at the next executive board meeting. 
um, which is May 19th. And um, you would be adopting the, that would be the recommended work plan and budget to be adopted. And then that is the version that would go to um, all of the councils um, for, for either presentation or on the consent agenda. So um, does that sound, and I should also mention another reason why we are doing it this way um, is uh, uh, due to King County's, um, King County's um, lengthy review process. So uh, I'll, I need to have a final work plan and budget um, to King County by July 14th in order for it to be passed this year. And so um, the goal is to get that approval from all of our city jurisdiction members um, before that time in order to uh, provide it to King County. And um, I should say also that is um, the reason the reason King County is also doing it that way is to align it with um, how they present the ARCH, the ARCH um, work plan and budget as well to the County Council. And so having the uh, alignment between the two as it moves through the process for the two housing coalitions uh, in King County, I think will serve us well. Um, are there any, any questions thoughts, concerns about this development process. So I should also note, I've been working very closely with our staff work group uh, to, to keep them informed of this um, and to, to see if, if, they, if they had any concerns about this process um, and um, we're already starting to schedule dates um, to come to your councils, uh, either as a presentation or on the consent agenda. And that's something that for those um, I haven't yet connected with or that you haven't connected with your staff work group member, knowing your, your preference on that would be very helpful. Um, since there will be so much review of, of this, um, given your your role as ambassador. Um, I think that there, hopefully their qu questions from councils would be getting answered and it would be pretty smooth, smooth sailing when it does get to council. And so I think for, for those jurisdictions that are open to it, having it go on the consent agenda um, and not having a presentation is I think an option for some and for others more than happy to attend uh, and present uh, the work um, on on the date that that we get scheduled. So with that, um, next slide, please. So this is just a slide I wanted to, to put out there as as the homework um, for you. So the the homework for board members, and this of course excludes um, King County, but to work with your councils to solicit any feedback on the work plan and budget, um, send to me that feedback um, by Tuesday, May 9th, and uh, decide if you would like a presentation at your council or if you would prefer a consent agenda um, without a presentation. And to please let your staff work group member know uh, which is your preference by uh, next week, Wednesday would be very helpful. All right. So I don't see any hands, so we can move on to the next slide. All right, so this is um, just an overview of the 2024 work plan. So as mentioned earlier, um, the draft is based on uh, the executive board priorities as established in the initial survey and then in our workshop um, from last month. And also I should say through through one-on-one -on -one conversations with each of you in my initial um, in my initial one-on-ones with you, um, some some good good content came out of that for me to know uh, to know and understand better your priorities. So most of the content in the um, draft 2024 work plan is 
our items carried over from previous years. So things should be um, fairly familiar, I'd say. And so this year I'm proposing four goals. Um, and really these come about um, through, if, if I had to just boil it down, <laughs> what skip, what SKIP's goals uh, really are. If we could only do three things, like what are those things? Um, and, and plus management and operations. So the answer to, to that for me was uh, goal one is to fund the expansion and preservation of affordable housing. And we do this through the housing capital fund um, and potentially you know, working uh, with the SKIP foundation, um, expanding that capacity and everything that comes along with that. And then two is to develop policies to expand and preserve affordable housing. So on one hand, you have, you got to fund, you got to fund this work, but then you also need the policy and the legislation to do that as well. And then um, the third is to serve as advocate for South King County. So being that unified voice, um, you know, pounding on the table, like you, you got to see us, South King County, we are here um, and um, you can't ignore us. And then uh, the fourth is managing the operations and administration. Um, this is something that hasn't um, necessarily been on the work plan before, but um, has enough uh, staff capacity impacts that um, I would like to represent it um, a bit stronger on, on this year's work plan. Um, also, uh, there are actions and indicators included with each goal. So the indicators are a new, um, new inclusion for this year. Um, and uh, I added priority level symbology uh, and organized this by you know, higher priority towards the top of the goals and lower priority towards the bottom. So we can go to the next slide, please. All right, so um, I wanted to do a brief just inventory of some of the new things that you will be seeing on the work plan. Um, so new items, this is, um, this is work that may have been done um, a while back, but um, hasn't, wasn't included on the 2023 work plan. Um, and I wanted to, to bring those forward because I think they're both really important. So that's action 12. Oh, you're right, this is good. <laughs> action 12, uh, build relationships with developers to learn from their perspective, the ways to encourage housing development, especially affordable housing development. Um, and then action 24, advancing the work on the SKIP Foundation efforts to establish logistics, administration, and pursue federal nonprofit status. So both of these are items that I think are really crucial to, to our success in our mission um, and um, have enough, I would say, impact on staff capacity that they should be uh, represented. And then items that um, SKIP does, the SKIP staff does, but aren't, um, haven't necessarily been on the work plan. I also wanted to, to include, um, and those are um, pooling the resources uh, through the 1406 and um, hopefully soon uh, 1490 funds. And then um, adopting the annual guidelines for the housing capital fund. Um, and that would be something that uh, you all would be, would be doing um, and then produce uh, public facing communications content um, with um, specific focus on South King County. This is through our social media and through our monthly newsletter. Uh, it's a monthly newsletter for now. Um, I think we're, we're trying to go quarterly, so that may be a, um, a quick edit to make. Um, and then organize and host uh, monthly executive and advisory, advisory board public meetings. Uh, and then managing the affordable housing inventory contract. This is the, the dashboard that Burke has been working with us on. And then maintain and update the SKIP website. Uh, so these are all the, the newer items on the work plan. And Michaela, we can go to the next slide. And then the question was, well, what are some of the items that aren't on the work plan or that got removed? Um, and so these are all the items that scored lower in terms of the executive board's priorities. Um, 
And I wanted to go through these just really quickly. Uh, so developing a plan to build capacity of SCIP, uh, develop a program to assist member cities with uh, administering local incentive programs. Um, these were, both of these um, items were, if you recall in our workshop, were, I would say, took up a, a, would be a significant amount of staff time committed to that. Um, and um, the board prioritized um, other items over these. And so um, it's not to say that um, these items can't be revisited next year or the year after that we won't do these. It's just that um, we have higher priorities uh, right now. And I see um, Eric, your hand is up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to tee up one question. And if, if you want to talk about this later or even offline, that's perfectly fine. Um, but it's one of the items here, which is uh, regarding working with state and federal legislators. Um, just as a quick framing, uh, one of the things we've been perceiving at the city level, and I think perhaps other city leaders have been perceiving, um, is I don't know if we're as in sync with our state legislators as we could be. And I wonder if um, there's an opportunity for us to still think about ways that member of cities or, or other members of SCIP uh, could more closely sync up with our state legislators. And I think this is of consequence because um, some of our local priorities in Normandy Park or, or some of our neighboring cities um, have come kind of cross purposes with the state legislature um, this year and, and last year. And so um, I, I guess I would just emphasize um, I could still perceive risk that a lot of the good work that this group is doing will still really require, I think, the support of our local um, delegations and uh, that, that somehow we agree or formalize ways for maybe our, our city leadership or our, our um, council members to, to still try to lobby and enlist the support of um, our state senators and state representatives. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's an issue that maybe just Normandy Park is is alone in perceiving, um, or whether uh, other other electeds or other members of SCIP would agree uh, that there's still perhaps the potential that the legislature is going one way and we go another. And I think that I think it's um, I think part of the challenge, and we talked about this a little bit in our at our February board meeting about um, about every skip member jurisdiction kind of being in a different place when it comes to legislative proposals, and then you know the proposals change, and so then maybe the city's perspective changed, and and trying to find alignment um, was uh, was was challenging. Um, that said, I think that there are some things in the in the coming sessions that this group I think can can be strongly aligned on and, and something I want to explore next session. So just because this item is coming off the work plan or I'm proposing to remove it, um, to me it doesn't it doesn't mean that I'm I'm not gonna be you know, advocating for South King County with our state delegation. Um, I wanna just be a little more strategic about it and make sure that the work that we're doing um, is, is in alignment with, um, I guess, leveraging, leveraging the legislature for, for our work. For example, I think the housing preservation strategy work that's coming up later this year I mean, I see as a as a great opportunity to work with our our state delegation to get that on their radar, um, maybe for the short session um, this coming next year, but definitely for the um, for the biennial budget the following year. Um, and so, I think um, that's that's kind of the tension, <laughs> um, you know, with 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 um, this I would say very diverse group here um in that way and so yes i think i definitely would want to um continue to to think through how to engage them um but in the way that um i don't think necessarily needs to be 
you know, phrased in this way or um, that it needs to be a top priority. Um, thank, thank you, Claire. That's that's helpful. And that's a good reminder of that prior conversation, um, recognizing kind of the, the policy diversity that exists across member cities. Um, and I think this is maybe more just top of mind for me now because we've been thinking more about the principle of preemption. Uh, where work that we could be doing at the city level or policy planning that we could be doing at the city level, maybe that we would put months or, or years of work into, may end up in a status of preemption if the legislature um, acts in a way to uh, supersede or, or um, remove the, the ability for cities to do that kind of planning. And so um, that, that's just on my mind, but I'm sure as, as we go throughout this year, uh, we'll, we'll continue, as you say, to identify opportunities to make sure that we're engaging our legislators. And ultimately, this does fall to our cities uh, to continue to do a good job at in kind of an organic, decentralized way. But I reflect my experience has been that is challenging. Uh, and I think I think my experience has been that the legislature has a lot of um, energy to continue to kind of act, in, act independently or according to their own vision. Uh, and and the city voices are not often included in the formation of that, but uh, that's that's just one person's opinion doesn't doesn't represent the perspective of our of our whole city's government. Uh, but thank you, uh, I, I think your your response was a good one, and I will uh, think about how we can do a better job as a city of Normandy Park. Thank you. So the next item was uh, actively vet potential projects in lead funding policy and prioritization discussions with SCIP executive board. So you may be thinking, oh my gosh, why is she taking that one? <laughs> That's very important. But this one actually, I think is reflected um, in the development of the housing capital fund guidelines. Um, that is a, a, a newer item. Uh, from the previous slide that we that we went over, I think that um, you know the board establishes um, and adopts the guidelines um, and how you want to prioritize the housing capital fund projects, and the advisory board uses that as a as a as a framework um, to determine the projects they recommend for your for your review. And so um, I just wanted to flag that. Um, for you, um, and then support efforts to advance five-year action plan identified by the Regional Affordable Housing Task Force. Um, so I think that Skip, Skip's nature is actually a lot of our work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis supports these efforts. There's, there's, um, we're, we're definitely in alignment. Um, the amount of of time and capacity, though, I don't know that it rises to the level. Um, of being on the work plan. And um, uh, this item was also um, lower on the priorities list, but, um, but just know I think that the work is, is, is being done. Um, and then annual updates to non-skip South King County cities and relevant stakeholder groups. Um, this item scored uh, lower um, as well, and then uh, same with the last item, work with HDC affordable housing developers and city and county planners uh, to reimagine the South King County Joint Planners and Developers Work Group. So um, this, uh, so Skip hosts uh, every other month uh, the Joint Planners Group and we'll continue to do that. Um, and so that, that work also continues. Um, and um, this item, uh, just scored lower and um, it sounded like was a was a larger um, kind of change in direction um, at one point. And so uh, so not to say that this work won't happen. Um, it's just that uh, I don't think it rises to the level to be um, on our work plan given um, some of the newer items as well. So next slide, please. All right, review the 2024 draft work plan, finally. Um, so I am going to um, share my screen now. Um, and Michaela, you can stop that one. And um, I will pull this up for you. And also if you're someone that likes to have it in front of you and be scrolling through it, um, it is provided in your uh, calendar invite as an attachment. Um, and I want to make sure I've got this. I'm going to 
Go ahead, share my screen. Let's see if I can do this. All right, and I can see everyone, I think. Um, all right, so let me make this a little bigger for you. <laughs> can you see that okay? All right, I'm seeing some head nods, so thank yes. you. All right, so the first page really is just the resolution language. Um, this should look pretty familiar. Um, and this is what um, you'll be, um, this will be the resolution cover page uh, when you adopt the work plan and budget at the, at the next meeting. Um, so these are just the whereas is which state, you know, the ILA says that, you know, we need to do um, X, Y, and Z, um, which we've talked quite a bit about. Um, and then we have the different um, explicit, the sections um, about uh, attachment A being the work plan, uh, operating budgets included, um, and then the commitments, uh, each party's contribution to SKIP's operating budget will be transmitted on an annual basis, um, that sort of uh, technical stuff. Then moving down, um, so the work plan summary, this is just the purpose um, statement of, um, of uh, the work plan, um, just some, some brief background. Uh, explanation on the priority levels, higher, um, medium, lower priority, uh, the schedule for the quarterly budget updates um, is included, which month that occurs, skips mission, and skips uh, three objectives that you all established, um, I want to say back in 2021. So for the actual work plan, here we are. Um, so I don't know if it's helpful for me, if, for you to read every item. Um, I don't, if that would be helpful, I'm happy to do that. Um, or I can just kind of walk you through the big picture. Um, and do, so- Do any of you want Claire to go through each one or would you prefer the higher level? I think I'm getting a lot of nods on the higher level, Claire. Great, thank you, I figured. Um, so this is goal one, fund the expansion and preservation of affordable housing. And so in this, um, in this table here, I've got uh, the numbered actions. So this way we can refer to them as, as you know, by their number um, and all of the items that support that goal. Um, so the biggest one is about the uh, long-term funding strategy for the housing capital fund. That's the one that you all identified as absolutely number one. Um, we we got to do that. And so over here, um, you have the priority of actions uh, at higher, medium, and lower. So three dots is higher. Uh, Mid-level priorities are two dots, and the lower ones are one dot. Um, and here are the indicators. Oops, the indicators are just below. Um, and the indicators here are newer. So um, um, I am going to just read a couple of these. So the number of housing units or number of projects built with financial support from SKIP. I should say that the indicators really are um, a measure of um, our progress towards meeting the goal. So how are we going to know that we're successful? Um, and so the number of housing units um, that we're able to create, the number of housing units preserved with financial support from SKIP, uh, the total dollar amount pooled by member jurisdictions for the housing capital fund, uh, new sources of revenue added to the housing capital fund. That could be from grants, um, that could be from this work um, that we'll be advancing with the uh, SKIP Foundation 501c3 um, fundraising efforts. And then finally, the geographic diversity of applications received uh, for the Housing Capital Fund. Um, and so this is just really to say that it's important um, that we have that, um, that um, opportunity to have these projects across South King County and in all of our jurisdictions. And so goal two, and the picture is not showing up here. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, it's probably my, my, my tech issues over here. 
But the second goal is develop policies to expand and preserve affordable housing. Um, and so the, again, the highest one on this one was develop uh, sub-regional housing preservation strategies and facilitate implementation. Um, and then this is where also this, the Sokiho group um, shows up on item 14. Uh, the housing policy matrix is, um, is an internal tool that, that I'll be using um, to, to help inform, I would say, uh, I would say my own knowledge of your jurisdictions, um, understanding who, what kind of policies exist in each of your cities, um, developing those relationships with developers and um, facilitating the technical assistance and updates for the affordable housing uh, inventory dashboard. And the indicators here are number of preservation policies advancing in member jurisdictions, successful update of data and deployment of the affordable housing inventory tool, and the number of relationships built with developers. Going on to goal three service advocate for South King County. Coordinate um, with the advisory board in collaboration with housing organizations and stakeholder groups. So this was a big item. Uh, the advisory board um, has expressed an interest in um, having more ownership over um, some part of the work plan. And um, we uh, originally, I think the language on this was uh, that I guess Skip would be would be doing these things, but the advisory board really expressed interest in some of this, and so um, we felt like it was appropriate to to um, allow some ownership over this particular item, since the ILA does explicitly call out um, that um, education and engagement of being a part of the advisory board's uh, core duties. And, and they really appreciated that. Um, and we got great feedback on that. And then uh, the public uh, facing communications item is on here. And then just representing Skip at those um, local and regional meetings uh, and forums uh, to provide that, um, that unified voice um, for South King County. And the indicators here are number of events or engagement opportunities advisory board members organize their support the number of communications published, the number of meetings, forums, or events attended that advance SKIP's mission. And you'll see that in terms of priority, um, all the actions under being an advocate are at the mid-level and lower. And so really this is to say that um, the, the actions under the housing capital fund items are just so much higher. And the actions under the housing preservation strategy policy work is just, that is like top priority. And so just having to kind of pick and choose where things align and fall, um, I felt like this, this, worked, this worked well, um, given what I heard from, from you all in previous conversations. And then finally, this fourth category is new, the manage operations and administration. Um, a lot of this is the is the um, is core work coming out of the ILA, uh, the things that we must do uh, according to that that document, um, and then also the things that um, we do to to maintain a well functioning um, organization, and so things like the annual work plan and budget development. So that's something that has been in previous work plans, continues to be. Um, the quarterly reports as well, part of the ILA requirements, uh, and the monthly monthly executive uh, and advisory board public meetings. It does take a lot of work um, and <laughs> want to make sure it's captured here um, as part of as part of our work plan, uh, maintaining the affordable housing inventory contract, updating the website, um, advancing the Skip Foundation work. Um, which I'm learning every day. I'm learning a little bit more and more about, um, and I'm very excited to to be uh, continuing to move that work forward as well. Um, and then the the monthly skip uh, board briefings on those key housing and homelessness topics as well. 
uh, indicators uh, the, that we adopt a work plan and budget. Uh, application is submitted for the SKIP Foundation 501c3 status. Um, so that will take a lot of work, um, but I think that um, I'll be I'll be bringing some of some of this work to you. Um, I would say in the next, maybe later this year, <laughs> um, in terms of how you want to proceed on on that particular item, um, and the maintaining the website is something that Dorsal um, is really committed to, um, and making sure that it's it's up to date. And uh, the number of um, uh, board briefings that um, that we present to you um, on those housing and homelessness topics. And with that, um, would love to hear your thoughts. Um, if if I've uh, prioritized something uh, differently than how you might, um, if if things are in the right categories, whatever kind of feedback, um, I would love to hear. Um, and we'll be taking notes as I hear from, from you all. So I see Colleen's uh, Colleen, yeah. hand up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Rebecca and Claire. Thanks for your presentation. Um, I had a quick question, and I think it's, I know it's in there. Um, I just didn't hear you comment on it. And that was the running um, uh, another round of, of allocations for um, the SKIP housing fund. So if you said it, I apologize, I might've missed it. Um, but I was thinking that that probably would be part of the work plan as well. Yeah, good point. So that is, um, I guess that would be, I mean, <laughs> I suppose technically it's not there. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Um, happy, definitely happy to add that, Colleen. Thank you for calling that out. Because a lot of this is, you're right, it's focused on um well, I guess it's under number three, facilitate final 2023 funding allocations through member councils. Um, but you're right, that it that's kind of the the last step. So let's let's add that in for clarity. Um, thank you. Project selection. Okay. Thank you. All right. And I think Tracy. Thank you. Uh, going to put my hand down. Uh, I love the organization. I appreciate the indicators. It's a really great tool to use at the end of the year for evaluating our work and also for work plan discussion for the next upcoming year. So great work. I, I appreciate this. So I have a question and then I have a couple of recommendations. So the question how do, how do you two as staff feel about these goals and actions below? Do you feel like in this organization where that you've made it, is this achievable? Or are you thinking you would like us to go back through this and uh, re, you know eliminate some things? Or you've recommended something that you think that you can do with the priorities like the three dots, two dots, one dot? Yes, yeah, so I would say that the way, um, the way I'm presenting this to you is would be my my recommended version to you, um, okay. given all of the known parameters, given our staff capacity. Um, and I think it's in a way that um, does provide guidance um, to, to Dorsal and myself to understand Oh my gosh, our hair is on fire. We've got, we have got 10 things we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> what are the things that actually need to get done? And so that's where, that's where, you know, I can, I can help guide that um, and really understand what those priorities are. Okay, good. Uh, so I'm going to make a recommendation uh, on the, like the organization of the lists in order to make it a little more clear, uh, especially presenting it to new 
eyes and ears like our councils. Mm -hmm. Um, But you've done such a good job in organizing and numbering the actions. This might be a recommendation to take up for next year. So I would leave that to anybody's thoughts. But it would be simpler to if we placed, uh, if we matched the objectives and the goals so that, for example, we've got three objectives that each goal and its actions were matched to an objective. The goal was an answer to an objective. And you kind of already done it. I went through this, for example, goal number one, almost all of the items in there, except for one, in my opinion, matched objective number two. And it was similar to uh, each one, each goal, most of the actions seem to match up primarily with one of the objectives. So I think it would be easier to conceive of this project if that were to happen. And I would also uh, recommend, the second recommendation would be to add a, uh, a different number one and take your um, goal number four and make that uh, recommend to sustain sustain operations and ILA commitments or requirements. In other words, number one is you must answer the ILA and and the operations of the organization. And that's a no brainer and it has to happen. So that would be number one. And then anything, any actions under that would be number one, you have to keep the organization going. And then after that, you end up with three more objectives and your goals are pretty closely matched already. It would make it a little bit easier to evaluate. And then the last comment would be uh, back to our conversation in the kind of the retreat format that we had is that we could create this objective and objectives and goal list could be a lot longer as a general overview of what skips goals objectives and mission is but each year when we set out to do a work plan for one year we can prioritize certain things out of it in other words the objectives and goals could be 30 items long but we might only pick 23 for a given year um, so that is my thank you and compliments and a couple recommendations and uh, appreciate the work that you've done. Thank you. And I may follow up with you later. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. Yep. Thank you, Tracy. Sonari. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for all your hard work on the square and for the staff work group. Um, does seem to reflect our conversations. I think I have kind of maybe staffy kind of comments on here, which is that I feel like at first when I looked at the items under goal one, it just felt like a long list, all of which was high priority. But then when I started digging into it, I was like, oh, but maybe three or four of these are really just sub bullets under something called manage the existing capital fund. And another set is grow or long-term planning for the capital fund. And it starts to make it feel less heavy if you do it that way, um, so that, you know, because otherwise you're scrolling through and I'm like, oh my God, it's so many things. And it is like, tactically, you're going to have to do a lot of these different steps, but it's easier to absorb if it's in a couple of smaller categories. I think that mostly applies to number one, but there's probably a little bit of of space to do that um, in, in number four as well. And then I had a question, or sorry, pause if you had a, if that makes sense. It does make sense. What was so you said managing existing housing capital fund and the phrasing of your second one was the long term. I was guessing I was kind of pulling it out of thin air, but it's sort of, Uh you know, it it's it was like growing the capital fund or long term strategy for the capital fund, because I think number one, for example, and number seven both kind of fit under that. Um, uh, And so that, you know, those are kind of different than three through five and six or three through six, which very much feel like managing the existing fund. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Thank you. For an example. Um, 
within that same one, my other question was, do we, because I don't remember all the details of what we approved last year, do we expect any projects to have completed construction by the end of 2024? Does anyone know off the top of their head? <laughs> Colleen, any thoughts? I don't. Dorsal no. says no. I am, I'm, the only one would be habitat phase one maybe but I don't but by the end of 24 I'm not thinking that's the case yeah I raised they, that go ahead uh they haven't fully broken they've got a couple of breakground stages that haven't even happened yet it, it won't happen before the end of the year okay um I raised that because the kind of monitoring funded projects, you can monitor them during construction, sure. So I think that one can stay in there. But in terms of measuring indicators, I think these are the right indicators long-term for what we're doing. But for 2024, I just don't want us to feel bad if we're not seeing housing units come out of the ground because we never expected to see them there. So there's a little bit of, to the degree, this is a one-year plan, measuring indicators in that regard that we're not going to realize and we already know it might make us look underproductive when we can actually already predict that. I was thinking, so for that item, I was thinking about the number of units every year that the housing capital fund is funding, not necessarily like finalized or things like that. Um, so, which, you know, obviously is like a, <laughs> it's a really, it's a really squishy anyway, and it doesn't necessarily like, more isn't necessarily better, right? If they're bigger units, like it will totally. cost more money, right? So, <laughs> yeah, and, well, and I have the same question on the communications one, right? Number of missives out into the world is less important than whether or not the, the communications landed with other people. But I also don't want to overthink this in our first year of trying to measure um, more specifically. But yes, it is squishy. I, I would say you and Michaela could have probably way too long of a conversation about how you count affordable housing units. What's the difference between when it's funded, when it's in the pipeline, and when it's actually online, and when you get to count that, and whether or not the data exists. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely a rabbit hole we've gone down multiple times. I just want us to go in, especially as this goes to council, if they're seeing something that says number of housing units built, yeah, that yeah. then they come back to us and ask, hey, it's 2024, where are my housing units by the end of the year that we're not setting ourselves up for failure? No, I think I like funded better than built, which is a more accurate reflection of what we're, what what I think I'm trying to say here and what you know the work of, of you all would be really doing. We're funding the projects. They're gonna be built in a few years, but right now we're making that financial commitment. So I think that's, um, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Other comments? We, Brian. You are muted, Brian. Okay, thank you. Um, Claire, I wanna, I wanna compliment you and the group on this, on the, on the, on the format and the structure of this, I found it very easy to read. I found it very, um, all the action items and the goals, I felt very, I felt there was a lot of accountability built into the work plan that such that if there was a stakeholder that wanted to know what we're doing and how well we're performing, they'd be, they, they could easily see how that is. And so I was really, I was really encouraged as I was reading this. Um, and I, I want to compliment you on that. My, a couple of concerns I have is more of the of the input that we processed that went into this well-structured work plan. And again, I wasn't at the the last the um, the, work, the work session that we had. Um, so if this was covered, my apologies. But um, what I recall from the survey before the work um, session was that the questions were 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 already given. Like the, like we didn't the brainstorming that we might have had. I didn't feel like it was totally captured in the in the questions that were asked. Um, so we were somewhat confined to the questions of the survey without you know more of the brainstorming input that I think should go into something like this. Um, 
more specifically for me, um, and I brought this up before, is just the whole housing and homelessness part uh, part of our uh, name and mission uh, that homelessness kind of gets glossed over sometimes. Like we have in our name, we have two, you know, housing and homelessness. So there's two umbrellas that we're working under. Um, housing, the housing portion seems to cover just about every aspect of the housing crisis, uh, you know, in terms of getting more um, units and, and getting the right units and getting the, the financing and the location and the people that we're serving, um, getting that in place. Whereas the homelessness umbrella, we, we kind of point back to the housing umbrella that we have whenever we talk about it. We don't talk about everything that, that sh should fall under the, the homelessness umbrella, which is, I understand, is a completely different discussion, a completely different set of practitioners and expertise that um, is, is difficult to um, comprehend. But um, I feel like if we're, and this is a little bit of a soul searching for our identity, if we're simply going to say, yeah, we're, we have homelessness, homelessness in our name, and we just simply point back to housing every time, I, I don't know why we have homelessness in our name because there's um, there's so much more to homelessness than than housing. Housing plays a huge part in the hom homelessness um, dilemma, but but it's much broader than that. So anyway, so with the with the input that goes into this this plan, I I perhaps next time um, we could we could have a little bit more brainstorming. Homelessness is is mentioned. Just a couple times, and most of it is in our name. Um, you know, that's the very last action item that it gets mentioned, and it's just have a briefing on homelessness. So, again, what that looks like, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm bringing up the issue without solutions. I, I don't like to do that, but it seems like we need to have a discussion of what what homelessness means to us and our and our name. And if it's just we're going to point to housing every time, then we really shouldn't have that in our brand. Um, and then the last thing is uh, just on some of the action items, um, without getting into details, I, I would just make sure that the action items that you have control over, like one of them was see how many policies get advanced by local jurisdiction. Well, you don't really don't have control over that. So it'd be a difficult metric for you guys to, you know, if, you, if, if you're failing in that, in, that in that metric, that's really not your fault um, in my mind. So I would just look at ways that you have control over the, the things that you are um, proposing to have action, or, or excuse me, the indicators that you have, that you're showing that your actions are proving effective. But again, I, I really appreciate the structure of this. I found it very encouraging for, for someone trying to get a sense for, uh, for where we are and where we're, where we're going as a, as a work plan. Uh, I deal with a lot of work plans and this one was a breath of fresh air, I have to say, so thanks. Thank you. I'll I'll respond to a couple of your of, of your um, comments, concerns. The so the the brainstorming of what's not included, I think happened in the survey um, at the end. Like, what else should would you want to see? And we reviewed uh, everyone's answers. Uh, they were anon anonymous um, at the workshop. Um, and kind of went through each one. And um, most of the items were actually things that I thought would are showing up at, in, the, in the work plan um, under different items. Um, and there, there was, I think, three, three different folks who mentioned uh, homelessness, wanting to, 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 to address it outside of housing um with our work and we had a, a I would say a lengthy I don't know how lengthy it was but we had a conversation about what what that means and Skip's role and um you know acknowledging that we do have an organization countywide that's charged with leading that conversation the King County Regional Homelessness Authority um and so um acknowledging that um and um, also not necessarily having alignment on the board that, that folks wanna move in a direction beyond the housing and homelessness part. part and I think partly because um, you know, the ILA and the original intent um, as stated 
um, really does say that um, it, it, wanting to acknowledge homelessness um, as part of Skip's work because of its connection to a lack of affordable housing and how the lack of affordable housing is the realm that the ILA, um, you know, in Skip's original purpose and mission um, is kind of, that's, that's where our charge has been. And so I think, I think that I can do a better job of, um, and this is what I talked about in the, at the workshop too. So this will be, <laughs> everyone else <laughs> has heard this, but I do want to say it, that I think it's important that we do start connecting our, our work to um, how it impacts homelessness and even just voicing that um, and reminding folks um, of, of, of that, making that connection a little bit more, I think will be helpful. Um, but in terms of um, outside of housing, um, you know, I think that that work is, is really the charge of uh, the KC um, RHA. Um, and so that's, um, would, would love for you to, to, to see that conversation, Brian, if possible, and, um, and would also love to just uh, follow up with you um, further on that. So if I might, since I sit on both KCRAJ and SKIP, um, I do think at some point in time, there could be a connection. I don't think it's, I don't think it will be in 2024, uh, but there is a five-year plan that has, that is being created right now by the KCRHA and it's gone through several iterations. And one of the goals in there is to sign ILAs with the seven different subregions. We in South King County and in essence, skip member cities are considered one of those sub-regional sub -regional organizations. And so I think it could make sense if we ever get to that point that we would be the conduit for KCRHA to be working with the South King sub area. Does that, does that make sense? Am I, am I saying that in a way that, <clears throat> that might, um, help us connect in the future. I don't think it will be 2024. Uh, and I, I think probably for us this time, kind of establishing more of the housing piece will allow us to be ready for the homelessness piece when it comes. KCRHA is always going to be the regional applying at that, at that higher level. But there are going to have to be sub-regional contacts in the future, just like you may have heard some of the some of the uh, east east side cities uh, have decided to do some funding with KCRHA, and those are part of the arch. You know, those are some of the arch cities. So we could be looked at as that as that connection point for South King County in the future. But again, I don't know that it's going to be 2024. It might be in our work plan for 2025. But there is definitely the opportunity for connection there. Eric. Thank you. And I'll, I'll try to make my my comments quick. Um, I, I know we've already been talking about this a lot. But just speaking to what Brian mentioned, um, for me, it does come back a bit to my earlier comment, which is um, from the municipal government perspective, I think we're we're starting to really talk around inefficiencies in the way that the conversation and the efforts are really being organized at the different levels of government and the disconnect that might exist between the contributions we could make at the municipal level versus what the county is leading versus what the state is leading. And um, for some of our cities, you know, we have smaller governments, and so we have more limited ways of engaging in this conversation. And so SKIP is one of the ways that Normandy Park, for example, is trying to meaningfully engage. But we recognize, as Brian said, that the scope of this conversation um, is more limited. And I think it causes us to feel frustration uh, that it isn't a more holistic conversation and that we as a city government don't have 
a way that we can see to more easily participate in that broader conversation that does touch on addiction and does touch on mental health. Um, from our perspective, uh, you know, we do see this as a humanitarian crisis, and that piece of it's not being talked about enough. Um, you know, that we have within our city and and in our neighboring cities substances that, for many of the users, are causing irreversible damage. Um, that down the road may prevent them from ever being able to maintain a job or maintain housing. Um, substances that, were they anything else, we would have a means. Uh, it, it, some other kind of environmental hazard, we would have a means as a city government or as um, state and county to protecting people from that environmental hazard. But because it's addictive substances, um, there's a variety of reasons why we're more limited. Uh, but yeah, that that I think is a part of our frustration is that we see this uh, crisis unfolding and we recognize the dire consequences for those that are affected, oftentimes leading to their deaths. And to have so few tools in our toolkit as a city government, and then also for the forums that we participate in to feel so limited. Um, I think that's why this issue for us keeps coming up is SKIP has been our means to engage on this issue. And, and perhaps we just need to do a better job finding or creating other forums uh, to, to discuss it. But I think this the municipal voice is an important voice. Uh, and I think that we should have more ability to have local policy uh, that touches on this issue, uh, because again, we're at any other environmental hazard, we would have many ways to address it. Uh, but but because it's addiction, again, I think it's kind of that question of preemption. Um, the state, or perhaps even the county, uh, would see itself as the responsible stakeholder. Um, but we have a disconnection from that. So, but I'll, I'll I'll be quiet now. But you can tell that we we do talk about it a lot locally. Uh, and we do have some frustration that's built up around this issue. Thank you, Eric. Uh, yes, and the Senate Bill 5536 is a little scary right now as far as the House version that um, both the House and the Senate are working on coming to come to some consensus on otherwise there will be no drug laws in this state as of July 22nd, uh, because the fix that was in place will sunset on that day. So there are concerns. I think they are, some of those concerns are bigger than what we at SKIP could ever address. Um, I think there need to be multiple forums, but I, I I do understand your frustration and, and appreciate that your city has been talking about this as have, I think all of our cities. I did, I did three, three interviews today uh, regarding fentanyl opioids and the drug laws. Um, there is a, there's a huge frustration and a need for us to come together I don't know that this is the forum for that, but perhaps that sparks a larger conversation of what venue do we come together in for that? Um, so I, I, I think that might be something outside of a skip board meeting that we all come together on and talk about how do we how do we move forward on that? Is there, an, is there another coalition that we need to form or is there one in place currently that would allow for us to do that work? And if anybody on this call is willing to get together for a chat, I am certainly willing to try and coordinate something. Thank you, Mayor oh, Bacchus. From our yeah. perspective, the answer would be yes. We we uh, we would really see a lot of benefit from uh, um, intermunicipal um, conversations starting around that issue. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I will I will do some outreach uh, to see if if you know interested people on this call or someone within each of your respective cities would like to be involved in a conversation like that. Colleen? 
Thank you, Mayor. I would just echo that I'm happy to participate in that as well. We find ourselves knee deep in it uh, at the moment and ongoing, um, and I work it every day. Um, I think there is opportunity with existing coalitions as well as the South King County implementation plan uh, that will be coming forward with KCRHA. But um, uh, I think it is uh, a scope of work that is large and probably larger than, than this group is meant to do. And so, uh, but it's, I think there are opportunities to piggyback on existing work happening out in South King County um, I agree. Our voice needs to be heard in that in that arena, and um, and there's ways to get that voice heard. So uh, I'll I'll leave it at that. Uh, just well, uh, I welcome the opportunity to partic yeah. to participate. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, Mayor, me as well. Happy to do so. Thank you. And, and to, to Eric's earlier point, I, 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 he raises a good point about how it's the it's the local jurisdiction's perspective on ways to engage and skip in the original pitch was very attractive to our city because it was an opportunity to collaborate with fellow uh, municipalities on this issue or well, issues of both housing and homelessness. And, um, and I get that homelessness is, I mean, it's such a, such a much bigger discussion than, than what I, this group can do. But, um, you know, if we're, if it's part of our name, then we need to do something about it is my opinion. And if not, then we need to change our name. Yeah, I, I, I fully, fully hear you and fully agree with you. Thank you. And I see a lot of heads nodding. So you are not alone in, in that comment. All any, right. any other comments? Okay, Claire. Yeah, thank you. So we um, we have the budget to go through, um, but I think it's a little more straightforward than the work plan. Um, Michaela, are you still with us? <laughs> Would you be able to uh, screen share? Uh, I think we're on. Yeah, you got it. Uh, screen. Thank you. So. Um, so I sent the budget uh, Wednesday morning for your review, um, and I hope you had time to look at it. If not, we're going to go through it, so no worries. Um, in summary, there are no new expenditures proposed. Um, there is a, a proposed 5% uh, increase over the previous year um, in expenses impacted by inflation. This includes salaries, benefits, professional services, and travel. Um, I did create a couple new expense categories, just kind of pulling things apart a little bit. Um, uh, travel as a standalone category is new. And then um, I added, um, I changed miscellaneous to other professional services and miscellaneous and, and took travel out of miscellaneous. Uh, the member contributions, just as a reminder, are based on population tiers. So depending on what bucket your jurisdiction falls into, um, that is the uh, contribution that, um, that we're asking uh, uh, your jurisdiction to contribute. And then um, just a reminder, uh, the executive board adopted a policy back in July, 2021, um, whereby uh, every year up until 2026, the uh, member contributions would increase 15% each year. Um, and this was to work towards a more balanced budget. Um, and so wanted to flag that. Um, and you'll see that reflected in the budget as well. And then um, we continue to spend down the cost savings from the first two years. Um, if you recall, there was there was a substantial, it sounded like um, amount that folks maybe had had um, contributed, but we have been spending that slowly down every year, and that's to offset any additional uh, increases to member dues. So next slide, please. So I wanted to show um, the uh, contributions by population and year. So this was established in the, um, in the ILA for that first year in 2021. 
Um, and so I uh, just wanted to show you the, the math and, and um, what that looks like for contributions every year through 2026, given that 15% um, increase. And you can go to the next slide and we'll see um, the population by city and year. And so um, this is showing uh, the member jurisdictions um, and then the OFM populations for 2018, 2021, and 2022, this was the only um, OFM data I had available um, to show, but, um, and for, for the 2024 budget, um, the, the 2023 population estimates aren't released until June 30th of this year. And so I have to use um, the 2022 population counts. So, so no one is, is for SKIP's uh, purposes, um, changing their, um, which population tier they're in. Um, and so wanted to, to show you this and where we're, where we're getting these numbers. And then if we could go to the next slide, thank you. So this is the projected budget for, um, I wanted to show uh, 2023s just for your reference to show you our estimated beginning fund balance, but then really through 2026, what, um, what we're looking at um, in terms of um, that 15% increase um, each year. And I should say that this assumes, um, this assumes that your city isn't changing population tiers. So these numbers could be different. Um, in, I would say, 2025 and 2026. It also assumes that there aren't any new um, activities or expenditures um, that SKIP would be engaged in that you would be supportive of um, funding. Um, and I'm seeing um, Sunari's comment about the unincorporated King County's population. And yes, I can, um, uh, happy to address that, yes. so. The, the star um, under that last line, King County unincorporated. So in 2018 in the ILA, they actually calculated the, the unincorporated portion in South King County. Um, and um, I, I didn't have that number uh, for 2022 um, and it wasn't included in 2021, but so the 2022 King County unincorporated is all of unincorporated. Um, King County. So just for reference. Um, thanks, Sonari. <laughs> and um, so I would say uh, if these numbers do change next year, if, you know, there is some new activity you want Skip to pursue, if there's staffing increases you're interested in pursuing, um, that would likely mean, um, you know, higher contributions, but all of that is completely up to the board. Um, so just wanted to give you this as, as um, um, kind of a, a guidepost for, for where we are right now. Um, and I'm um, gonna see, um, I, I wanted to talk briefly about um, the cost savings spend down. So you can see um, the under total revenues that's spend down balance. So you can see that it's it's spending down um, every year. Um, and so then it would be exhausted by 2026. And then the estimated beginning fund balance that beginning one in 2023 um, is strictly an estimate. It's subject to change. Um, and so, but it's the, it's the best number we have right now to, to project out. Um, and you can see that it's, um, it's declining every year. And so we are spending that fund balance down. Um, my preference is to have um, at minimum 10% um, of our expenses in, uh, as, a, as a beginning fund balance. Um, but I would say I would be um, even more comfortable closer to 25% um, because we are such a small fund. Um, and so um, wanted to wanted to show you this, um, and it will likely mean you know future future budget conversations on 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 how we move forward. Um, I also wanted to just talk briefly about the King County line. Uh, there's uh, two line items there. It says King County and additional King County. 
So the King, um, for historical context, um, King County was, was generous um, uh, in that they want to um, support Skip and Skip's work. So from the beginning have said and, and committed to funding us at $75,000 a year. Um, and so this um, King County line item reflects the population tier of um, where unincorporated King County might fall into. And that number increases at the same rate as um, everyone else's. But that additional King County line item is that increment between that number and 75,000. Um, and so that's, I wanted to explain that because I think it's a little, it's not super intuitive and you wouldn't necessarily know that. Um, it has an asterisk there. It is described um, on the budget document, which you'll see in a minute um, if questions do come up. So with that, um, Michaela, you can take that down and I'll share my screen to look at the budget. And here we go. All right. Are you seeing is this? <laughs> Are you seeing the budget? Great. Um, so, so you can see here um, the estimated beginning fund balance for 2024 is about $206,000. The estimated ending fund balance is about $145,000. And then we have each of your jurisdictions um, contributions, which reflect that 15% increase over 2023. Um, and again, no one is changing population tiers this year. Um, I should mention uh, Des Moines, you're very close. <laughs> so it might be next year. <laughs> Um, and, and I know federal way you, you all had a population increase in, uh, recently, um, I think last year. So just flagging that other things here. So interest earnings, I did want to include, um, this was my best guesstimate, um, for, for that. Um, and that is, that is strictly on the operations uh, revenues that we're receiving. It's not the interest earned on housing capital fund. Um, and then the office space, uh, the in-kind donation, this is um, required in our ILA. It says that we should include, include this. And so we, we do add it here. We add it um, as a revenue and an expense. And so it, because it doesn't have any uh, fiscal impact, um, it zeroes itself out. Um, total revenues are 358,000 with that spend down balance of 60,000. Um, that total is 419,000. And with regard to expenses, um, salaries and benefits, this was a 5% increase over the 2023 budget. The, the interfund IT, this is a um, FTE established um, item uh, for City of Auburn, um, all departments get allocated this um, depending on how many staff people they have. This is to support um, our, our IT and our phone usage. Um, and so that is a given with our um, administering uh, agency. The advisory board compensation isn't increasing. This is the same number as last year. Um, and the office space um, gets zeroed out. And then the other professional services and miscellaneous. Um, so this item is um, for things like um, contracts that might be coming forward with some of that, the skip foundation work that needs to occur. Um, this is our member dues as part of a member uh, with HDC that you approved, I think last year or the year before and any other items, uh, kind of unexpected items that might come up. Um, travel, this, this was pulled out of uh, miscellaneous and so it's a standalone category. This is to cover any kind of um, you know, travel related to conference attendance by, by car or by plane and then travel between the member jurisdictions. And then professional development is any trainings or classes for the two skip staff. Um, and then supplies, um, this was 
Uh, I pulled some of this funding actually out of um, the miscellaneous uh, total from 2023 to, I think, more accurately reflect um, how much we might be spending on supplies. And this, this includes paper, uh, pens. It also includes uh, if we need any new technology that um, doesn't, isn't supported by City of Auburn, a new, new laptop or something like that. Um, and then the administering agency 10% uh, admin fee. So this is 10% um, of the total expenses of SKIP um, minus the uh, any in-kind donations. So this is to pay for um, this is to pay for all of the services um, that we receive as as uh, being part of City of Auburn. Um, so the the legal um, advice that we get through um, Auburn's legal staff, um, the time that they spend um, with us, the uh, the finance department and, and all of the other great things that come along um, with um, being hosted by um, our administering agency. And so um, that, that is uh, the budget. So I would be happy to take um, any questions, comments, um, anything else. Questions from anyone on the budget, comments. I will say it was well put together. Uh, appreciate Claire, all of your work, and I'm sure Dorsal's as well on, on getting all of these pieces put together and the, the forecasting of the size of each of our cities. As we know, we're all growing. So uh, if there aren't any questions or concerns. Mayor, could I make a quick comment? Yes. Oh, yes. I, I just, just hearing what um, Claire was saying just reminds me of how uh, fortunate we are to have Auburn um, as the administrative leader for this for this group. So thank you very much. and glad to see that there's some uh, level of, of um, that, that, that there's some budget for that. So thank you. Thank you, Brian. All right, anything else on the budget topic? I would just say that um, I appreciate everyone's comments and feedback. I'm going to, to take that. I'm gonna make some changes to the work plan and then I will resend that to you, um, I think Tuesday, either Tuesday evening or early Wednesday morning so that you can begin to solicit that feedback from, from your councils. And so you'll have an updated version um, at that time. So thank you all. Okay. Okay. Moving on then, we will move to state legislative review. Yes. And so Claire, you didn't think we would take the full time today. <laughs> I I think there was some, you know, <laughs> technological issues on my part. So I know, look at us. Um, so um, Dorsal, I don't know if you're able to have your slides or if you need me to run them. Um, um, if you wanna turn, uh, I need permission to share my screen. Oh, okay, let's do that. Um, so while Dorsal's pulling that up, I just wanted to intro this item and say that um, since the beginning of legislative session, we've been trying to come every month and present to you some, some of these um, updates that we see as being relevant for you. Um, and um, we are not taking positions on any of these, these bills that we're presenting to you. I just wanted to make sure that was made really clear. Um, but these are things that you should just be aware of. And then where appropriate, we've tied um, an asterisk um, those bills that tied to our um, legislative priorities that you had identified earlier. But those that aren't part of those priorities, um, we did just want to flag for you for your, your um, information because they, they do impact um, cities and, and housing. So with that, um, Dorsal, we've got 15 minutes. Um, and so um, I have a, a couple updates at the very end that we'll want to get to as well. So with that, go ahead.
Dorsal, are you uh, on mute? Can you, uh, I need you to share the slides because okay. it mutes me if I'm presenting apparently. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, I'll do that. Um, if you want to start uh, presenting now, I'll pull this, I'll, I'll pull the slides up. Really yes. love technology. I will not try and pull the SpaceX and tell you that everything is actually working like it's supposed to. Um, <laughs> I apologize for the errors. Um, so jumping to slide three, really just getting into the meat. Thank you again for this opportunity. Sorry for the mistakes. Um, we changed the format a little bit, which hopefully you'll get to see, but um, we divided up the slides into bills that are moving or move forward and uh, bills that didn't make it. Um, so out of the bills that did make it uh, or are still in the process of uh, some form of action, uh, we've got House Bill 1042. Uh, what that does is it's going to make some changes so that cities are not able to impose certain restrictions on existing buildings that are zoned for commercial or mixed use through ordinance, development and zoning regulations or other official controls. And that would begin after the next comprehensive plan update. Um, there's quite a few uh, restrictions in there, but just a couple of examples are some uh, design standards acts are no longer um, and uh, there's some parking requirements that are no longer um, allowed. Um, House Bill 1046, uh, that will increase the area medium income limits on public housing authorities to 80% um, of AMI. Um, House Bill 1337 is not on here, and it's actually one that um, I failed to track uh, for the last couple of months, but it has um, moved to the governor's office for signature. Um, 1337 uh, requires that cities allow for the construction of ADUs. Um, and the reason I'm mentioning it now, it'll tie into our next uh, topic. So House Bill 1110, more commonly known as the Middle Housing Bill, um, has passed. Um, as I believe it's still waiting the governor's signature, but uh, it's expected to get signed. Uh, there's a lot in 1110, and there's been a lot of energy around this bill. Um, one of the elements that I did want to highlight is that um, the bill uh, provides nine different types of middle housing and only requires cities to use six of the nine. So there is some element of uh, choice in the bill. Um, but uh, there's still a lot of conversation that still needs to happen. Um, in particular, there's some potential challenges with the way that 1110 and 1337 will interplay with each other that need to be figured out. One just possible interpretation, just one example, is that uh, with the two bills, you could have a situation in a city of uh, 25,000 where you would put a duplex on a lot that could also and would have an ADU. So you would end up having three units uh, per lot. Um, so just something to keep in mind as they're continuing to figure that piece out. Um, House Bill 1326, that allows just uh, certain municipal utilities to waive connection charges and uh, fees for properties that are um, doing housing work or nonprofit organizations, public development and stuff like that. Uh, next slide, please. Um, House Bill 1474, um, that's the one that creates the covenant homeownership account and the program to address the um, housing discrimination due to uh, racial restrictive uh, real estate covenants uh, historically in Washington state. Um, House Bill 1695 um, was tied in with one of our legislative priorities and it did pass. Um, this bill updates the definition of affordable housing for the transfer, lease, or disposal of surplus public property um, to include um, permanently affordable home ownership models. Um, and then last, lastly, uh, Senate Bill 5301 um, streams lines and modernizes RCW Chapter 4385 and other RCWs related to the Department of Commerce housing programs. Um, over the past 30 years, um, amendments and modifications have uh, made uh, the RCW uh, unwieldy uh, from the perspective of Department of Commerce. And so this is making an effort to clarify the RCW and make it more practical for use. Uh, next slide, please. Of course, with so many bills at play, uh, some didn't make it all the way or were purposefully discarded for other ideas. I'm not going to cover all of them, especially in the, the short time that we have, um, but I'm happy to follow up with any information that you all would like or um, any information that you like that you didn't see presented at any point. 
Um, just touching on a couple here, um, House Bill 1052 would have expanded tax exemption for qualifying affordable housing programs, but it, at the end, it looks like this, this would have been specifically targeted to San Juan County, and it's not clear that it would have been applicable uh, statewide. Um, so this bill was moved to the X file and uh, likely won't come back up this year. Um, House Bill 1149 and Senate Bill 5202, which you'll see on the next slide, those were the governor's uh, 40 million bond bills. Um, those did not move forward. And from one source, um, I learned that part of the, the challenge was that it, it seems like uh, this bond bill would have potentially uh, done uh, damages to the uh, state's credit score. Uh, next slide. Um, House Bill 1628 um, is the REIT bill, and I will be very honest, uh, they literally had not done anything uh, since February, and then on Monday they had another a second substitute, so we have not had a chance to, to really delve into the full details yet. Um, but um, it looks like some of the changes include uh, that this would have cut the real estate excise tax for homes that were being sold under $30 million. Um, I think one of the key takeaways from this bill that it'll, it allows the legislative authority of any county or city to impose an additional excise tax on each sale of real, um, real estate property in unincorporated areas and in the corporate limits of cities. Um, it's important to note here that if the city legislature does not adopt the full tax rate by June 30th, 2025, uh, the county legislature would have been able to uh, and can impose that. So it's here on the bills didn't move, but actually it literally moved uh, just this week. So something to keep uh, an eye on. Um, and, and then Dorsal, I, I think yeah. that one may be dead now. Uh, I was I just prior to this meeting was on the AWC call and I don't believe the REIT bill or the property tax bill uh, are still on live support. Uh, thank you for the update, Mayor. And it has been, uh, yes, that it's an ever changing, constant changing uh, thing to track. It's been a, a fun adrenaline rush to try and keep up. Um, <laughs> Uh, 5466, um, it wasn't one of our priorities, but it was another bill that got a lot of attention. It was more commonly known as the Transit Oriented Development Bill. There were a lot of amendments and things like that um, throughout the process, so it didn't make it out of committee. Um, but both sides did have things that they liked in it. They just felt it needed more time. And so there's a strong belief that you will see a version of this bill brought back in the next uh, uh, legislative session. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the state budget is very vast and it's very complicated and there's still a lot of discussions happening. Um, and it sounds like these discussions will literally continue until the Monday deadline. Um, the one thing though that I've heard consistently from multiple sources continually over and over again is that um, the amounts displayed in each category might change, but that both the House and the Senate are committed to a significant investment of $400 million into the Housing Trust Fund. Um, if you're double checking the math, uh, you'll see that neither of these columns truly add up to the 400 million, but there are just other pockets that we chose not to highlight on this slide that do bring up that total amount. Um, the other really important thing I, I think to, to call out is that there's a, a major focus here on creating homeownership opportunities, uh, which is a major priority I know for several of the, the SKIP partner cities. Um, including this 400 million on the slide, um, there would potentially be a total of $625 million put towards affordable housing um, in the state's budget this year. Um, next slide. Um, and so we are only a couple of way, uh, days away from the final day of legislative session. There's been a lot of um, activity this year and some significant investments in the future of housing in Washington state. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions um, and Monday is the deadline and they will definitely be working till then. So thank you for the opportunity to, to update you all. Thank you, Dorsal. Any questions or comments? It has definitely been one of the busier legislative sessions that I can remember. I think every, every long session we say that, it just continues to be more and more added to 105 days. 
Uh, and thank you for all of your work in keeping track of these bills. Some of them change at a moment's notice. So appreciate the update. Thank you. Anyone else have any comments or thoughts? Okay, get back to my agenda then. Uh, any updates or announcements from anyone? Anything we wanna know about? One thing um, I wanted to, to bring forward is uh, the conversation about having in-person meetings uh, and where those should be, if they should be um, at the city of Auburn in those council chambers that we were at with the workshop last month, or if they should be uh, rotating with interested parties. And so um, Dorsal had created a uh, survey that um, we were going to give you, but I don't know, Dorsal, if that's actually technologically <laughs> feasible. Um, oh, okay. So it's in the chat. Um, it is using the Google Forms, which I know, Mayor Back, as you are not, you had advised us before to not use because it defaulted to our personal Gmails. However, I think Dorsal has figured out a way to not have that occur. Um, and so would love there, I think it's just two questions, maybe three um, about your preferences. And so that would just help us greatly uh, figure out some of these um, logistics for our upcoming meetings. Um, and I think the trick was that um, if you're in Google, if you're in a Google browser, you need to have a, you either need to log out of your, your Gmail account or you need to have an incognito mode uh, window open, um, which then will, um, it'll make you anonymous in that um, survey. So if anyone is having any issues, so you can do this now, that would be my preference. Uh, you can do it uh, later, um, but we do wanna start uh, planning that, um, it'd be very helpful. And then, um, my second one is that um, I just wanted to acknowledge that it's, I, I thought Joy, Joy Scott might be um, on the meeting today. This, this would have been her last um, skip meeting, but did just want to shout her out. Um, and uh, she's uh, leaving, leaving her position at the city of Auburn. She has been our, our Auburn staff work group member um, for many years, but as you all know much better than me, she was also a part of the original crew that started uh, skip and so just wanted to um, acknowledge her and thank her um, and I don't think uh, skip would be where where we're at right now uh, without her her leadership and so um, wanted to just uh, acknowledge her and wish her all the best in her uh, in her next endeavors yes thank you Claire that uh, thank you for for mentioning joy she has done a tremendous body of work, both for Skip and the city of Auburn. And I wish her nothing but the greatest of success in her future endeavors. And I know wherever she lands and whomever that is with, she will, or they will be very fortunate to have her. All right, anything else? If not, we are right on schedule. I have one more brief update. I just wanted to give the board a heads up that this uh, that Skip will be convening the South King County Joint Planners and Developers next week on Wednesday afternoon um, to talk about uh, barriers to development for those developers that do um, have projects in South King County. And so um, planners from um, your cities will, will be there um, and um, we will be taking copious notes to understand um, the perspective of our, our developers in our uh, subregion. So just wanted to share that. Um, and if folks are interested um, in attending, um, or if you know other developers, um, just uh, you can reach out to, to Dorsal for to RSVP and get that link to, to join. But um, I have done so much talking today. I'm going to stop now. So thank you. All right. Thank you. And we are at three o'clock. I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful weekend surrounded by friends and family or surrounded by no one, whichever is your preference. Uh, enjoy and know how much you're appreciated for the work that you're doing. Thank you.
Bye-bye.